Warning. Censorship. Warning. Censorship. And he says, well, you're a Muslim. Why are you serving alcohol? I says, excuse me? What is that supposed to mean? I'm a Muslim. I'm trying to make a living, and I'm allowed to do what I have to do to make a living. So right now, everyone in a small business like this is suffering, and they're suffering big time. Rent can hardly be paid. Bills can hardly be paid, especially when you have to be thinking about paying fines for $880 every time a bylaw officer comes in here. David Menzies for Rebel News here in Mississauga, Ontario. And I'm actually at the Redifier Sports Bar and Grill. And I'm with the owner, Mohammed Hussein. And, yet, you know, once again, folks, here we have an operator just trying to eke out a living during this pandemic. Uh, someone who's trying to obey all the rules. But, you know, bylaw officers, they're sticklers for details and perhaps... Sometimes they even make things up. Um, Mohammed, we spoke off camera and you told me about your plight. Um, you have received several tickets. Um, I guess we should go back to last month when Bylaw paid a visit to your little sports bar here. What exactly happened? Well, uh, they came in uh, around, uh, I'd say about eight o'clock at night. There were four people in here, uh, two, uh, three employees, Actually, six. Sorry, my mistake. There were six people in here, two, uh, three employees and two patrons waiting for food. Uh, they had ten cops and four, two uh, liquor license officers and two bylaw. So Wait a minute. Ten cops? Ten cops stormed the place. <laughs> two bylaw and two uh, uh, alcohol and gaming uh, yeah, official, no, I guess. Yeah. Okay, then. No. Um, and, and, and what was the alleged crime that was occurring here? There was no crime. There was just customers waiting for food. And, and we should be clear, this would have been uh, when Mississauga was in the gray zone lockdown, meaning people couldn't eat food uh, in a restaurant. But as you said, they were waiting for food. They were not consuming food here. Is no, that correct? Not, no. Okay. They were not consuming any food. And so... What was the issue then that they were supposed to wait outside in the cold? They weren't allowed to wait in a heated restaurant? Well, that was what I was told by the bylaw officers, that they should wait outside and not in the restaurant. Right, and I think you said one of them uh, off, off camera, you said that you were told that why can't they wait in their cars, and they didn't have cars to drive. That's right. They, ha they have a few customers that were calling, and come and pick it up without even, I don't know how they get here, if they're close by. They, they, some of them don't have cars to wait in, so where are they supposed to wait? Like, wait in the cold? Yeah, so, I, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, so you're showing some empathy for these people. You're, you don't want them waiting in the cold for their food. You bring them in. And yet they see this as some kind of a super spreader event, but I believe, what, two minutes down the road from your restaurant, there's a Walmart, and there are literally hundreds of customers in there? You got that right. It's so packed there, it's unbelievable. You know, this is inexplicable. Why the huge police presence, too? I mean, were they expecting some kind of trouble? I have no idea, but uh, they had 10 police officers, and like I said, two bylaw and two gaming and alcohol officers in here. So... 14 people came in here, and I had four and two six, which meant they overcrowded my establishment, you know, off the bat. Well, you know, you raise a great point here, Mohammed. that the perverse irony is that with 14 law enforcement people exactly. coming in, that was the real um, danger, I would say, if, you, if, if, if you're talking about social distancing and whatnot. There was no social distancing that night, trust me. They were very close by, all sticking together, talking and doing what they had to do. Well, you know, that is staggering. I didn't know about the huge police presence. You also told me something interesting uh, off camera when we spoke one of the bylaw officers looked at your liquor uh, rack there, and he said something really peculiar to you. Well, when he came in that night, there was no one here. He said there was four people. I said, well, people were here waiting for the food they left, and if you're looking at the place, you should have seen that. And he says, well, you're a Muslim. Why are you serving alcohol? I says, excuse me? What is that supposed to mean? I'm a Muslim. I'm trying to make a living, and I'm allowed to do what I have to do to make a living. This is staggering to me, Mohammed, because it's almost as though 
this bylaw officer is with the um, Alcohol and Gaming Commission of Ontario, the Sharia Law Division. <laughs> He's suddenly taking the moral high ground, telling you what you can and cannot sell. I think that's what he's trying to do. Actually, I think he's trying to close me down. That's all. Is there, uh, and, and then, of course, after that particular incident, and, and you received some tickets for that, I believe your tickets right now total more than $2,000 plus a summons yeah. with an unnoted number. Um, then uh, earlier this month in January, you had a, a bylaw officer uh, come in, and um, what happened with that particular officer? Um, are you talking about the smoking one? Yes. Well, he, he, she came in the night when the 10 cops and the two other officers were here. Oh, I see. Okay. And they said they saw someone smoking at the back in my kitchen. I says, no, nobody smokes in the establishment. They use my back entrance to go outside and smoke. So it's impossible for you to see them smoking there. Plus, the door was closed. How can you see them smoking? So I, I guess the, the he said, she said thing here is that She's saying that she saw a customer in your kitchen yes. smoking. You're saying, no, 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 they just used the kitchen to get to the back of the restaurant outside to smoke. That's correct. That's all they do, use the kitchen to go to the back. Wow. Uh, again, staggering. And, and even, um, I believe you said, there was also a problem going back to October. You, we still had, I guess, patio weather then. You had somebody on the patio drinking a beer, and that resulted in a ticket too, didn't it? Yes, it did. Actually, what happened that day, the two officers were here, bylaw officers were here. We were talking. They were just checking to make sure that I had everything in place, which everything was fine. But they had a few guys in front of the restaurant drinking. One came in with a beer in his hand, and actually an empty beer bottle. And maybe he, I, he, she said that he took a, a sip while he was in the restaurant. I says, but he wasn't drinking. When he came in the door, he took his last sip. He walked to the counter, put the, the bottle down, and he left. So he, he brought in this empty beer bottle just to return it. It's a, it's a money-back bottle. He doesn't want a litter. And for that, you got a ticket yes. too? She came back a month later and gave me a ticket for $880. Oh, my goodness. So this is all adding up. Now, one other thing, folks. Just two days ago, bylaw officers once again came by to the restaurant. They gave Mohammed a piece of paper, and it says... Uh, Store capacity is five. Well, Mohammed, I don't understand. They're saying that up to five people can indeed come in here. Uh, they can't eat food, but they can, they can indeed presumably wait for their food. So going back um, to when you got fined for having three people waiting for their food, the city of Mississauga is basically saying you're allowed five people to wait? I, I can't make sense of this. Well, that's what the bylaw officer told me when she came in Monday. She handed me the paper. She asked me how many people I normally have waiting for food. I says, three, four, five. Depends. She says, maximum five. So she said, maximum five, you can have wait for food. And yet another bylaw officer said, uh, I guess they thought it was zero. I guess so. That's the reason why I was issued the tickets. So, really, it sounds to me they don't know what they're doing or they're making things up as they go along. I think they are changing and making things up as they go along, like you said, and, you know, that's not right. Unbelievable. It's crazy. Mohammed, tell, tell us, how hard is it for you in the food service business to eke out a living? Uh, I, you know, I, I know the food service business well. I used to cover it. Um, I know even when the economy is roaring along, it's, it's tough sledding. But right now, with all these restrictions and then with all these bylaw enforcement officers coming by, I can't imagine what it's like to be in your shoes. Well, I don't think anybody would be able to, do, to imagine that because right now, everyone in a small business like this is suffering, and they're suffering big time. Rent can hardly be paid. Bills can hardly be paid, especially when you have to be thinking about paying fines for $880 every time a bylaw officer comes in here. And, and here you are, I think you told me off camera as well, you're, you come in here at 9 a.m., you don't leave until after 11, you're putting in so many hours to eke out a living, and again, it, 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 my heart goes out to you because it must be so tough. It is very tough, being here every day, seven days a week, trying to make a living, and then you have to deal with the situation with the city and the police and the, you know, whoever else is trying to get to you. So it's very difficult. Well, Mohammed, if... The bylaw officers are not going to show you any empathy here in the city of Mississauga. 
we certainly are. We, you are now our latest Fight the Fines client. We have got a top-notch criminal lawyer that is going to represent you. You don't have to worry about spending any time in court. You're busy enough trying to make a living. And we are going to crowdfund uh, those legal fees so that you don't have to spend a nickel. Uh, we're going to take that off your plate. We're going to fight this. We don't think this is right. What do you think about that? I think that's a great idea, and thank you guys so much for coming to, to my help. Okay. Rebel News, the best, and once again, thank you so much. Great. Well, Mohammed, thank you so much for making uh, time uh, for us, and uh, when the courts you know, are free and your, your tickets come up for, for fighting, we will be there with our top-notch criminal lawyer. And there, there you have it, folks. I mean, it's just getting downright petty, isn't it? Here you have a small operator, like I said, just trying to eke out a little bit of a living. It's hard enough just selling food on a, a takeout and delivery basis. Uh, but who needs bylaw coming in all the time? And who needs a lecture, for goodness sakes, about a man's religion and whether or not he should be selling uh, alcohol? I mean, talk about chutzpah to the power of infinity. We're going to fight for Muhammad. We're going to correct this injustice. For Rebel News, I'm David the Menzoid Menzies. Hey folks, are you a business owner and you are sick and tired of the authorities telling you to keep your store closed? Well, if you plan to open up illegally, I want to hear about it. Please go to IWillOpen.com. That's IWillOpen.com. 